Welcome back everyone and today we're going to be making a DIY CT slash CAT scanner. So the other day I was thinking it would be awesome to have your own personal CAT scanner. So I said to go on Google and search up CAT scanners for sale. And well considering I have the wage of a McDonald's worker and I saw these prices I knew it was not going to be possible to buy one of these. They're in the price range of $30,000 up to over $2 million. Yeah, I couldn't even afford a $1,000 one, so we are out of luck there. The good news is I got about $200 in my wallet, and this is all we're going to need to build our own DIY CAT scanner. First thing we need, Arduino kit. Second thing we need, this big voluptuous high voltage DC power supply. Thing we need is this x-ray tube, which came out of a mammogram machine. And finally, we need this x-ray intensifying screen. And this right here is practically all the stuff we need to make a fully functioning CT machine. Before we get started, what even is a CT machine and how does it even work? Best way I can describe a CT scan is a three-dimensional x-ray. And we actually make it using multiple two-dimensional x-rays, right? So if we take an object and we take multiple x-rays at various different angles around that object, we can then compute it using mathematical algorithms to create a final three-dimensional build of that object in x-ray. So really cool and really useful. This is also where the name comes from, CT scanner, which stands for computed tomography. You also might've heard the term cat scanner and that's just the old term. So you guys have actually probably been in a CT scan before. It's this right here, one of these big donut machines. Not to be confused with MRI and MRI, you'll be in there for like 30 minutes to an hour and it's a lot more cramped, um, but a CT scan only takes a couple minutes and um, it's a bit more open. I have even had a CT scan myself. I hit a big ass crack longboarding and um, slammed my head pretty hard. So I had to get a CT scan. Yeah, I'm a bit of an idiot, um, but everything turned out good. I only lost a couple IQ points. So, you know, still in the game, still in the game. Okay, enough explaining. Let's go ahead and build this bad boy. So here's the set we're gonna be using to take each of our individual two dimensional X-rays. This is our high voltage DC power supply and here's our X-ray tube. Now, if you want to learn more about this, I do recommend go watching my previous two videos and you'll understand how this whole setup works right here. So we're going to need something to capture our x-rays so we can look at them. And in this case, we're using this x-ray intensifying screen. So what this does is, is this white screen here contains a scintillating compound. And this compound emits visible light when struck with radiation. So in this case, we're going to strike this with x-rays and we'll get green visible light out. And of course, things that block x-rays, right? We're gonna get a dark spot on the screen. So that's how we get our x-ray image. So something like if we have bones on here, bones will absorb more x-rays and we'll get a dark spot on the screen where flesh will let more x-rays through and you'll get a brighter spot on the screen. So this will allow us to capture our x-ray image. And all we have to do is take a camera and point it at this and take a picture of the screen and we'll have our x-ray image. Again, watch the previous video if you wanna learn more about these and why they were used. Here's the ultra sophisticated light type box that I also used in a previous video. So what this does is, is keep light out from the intensifying screen. So the intensifying screen glows very dimly and we're gonna need the camera to pick up as much light as possible from that screen and not from any other sources. So this will help keep all the light out from there. And then we have our x-ray tube here, our object goes here, x-ray beam will go right there, bada bing, bada boom, we'll get our x-ray, and yeah, there you go, that, that's how you create an x-ray. Right here's just a normal x-ray machine, we're missing a super crucial part, the Arduino, and the Arduino is going to turn this simple x-ray machine into a CT machine. So let me walk you guys through how this all works. The main component we have here is the stepper motor. And like I said before, it's just a bunch of two-dimensional x-rays put together. So what happens is it's, we're going to take an x-ray, boom, it's going to rotate eight degrees, take another x-ray, boom, rotate another eight degrees, take another x-ray till we get a full 360. And that will give us all of our data we need to create our CT scan. But there's also some electronics that come along with that. Here's the main board doing all the work, and this is the Arduino board. Well, this one is an off-brand one because I'm just a cheap bastard. And then here we have two relays. So this first one right here controls this little guy, and this is a Bluetooth device that connects to my phone, which will then tell my phone to take a picture when the X-ray exposure is happening. So right, it times that perfectly. This right here, it's not hooked up at the moment, but this will control our power supply to turn our X-ray tube on because we don't want the X-ray tube continuously emitting because it will get a little too hot for that. So we'll use that relay to control that. 
here we have an IR receiver so I can remote control it. <laughs> I wired it up <laughs> to this Roku remote and it works pretty damn well. So um, yeah, the Netflix button and the Disney button control it. Final component we have down here is this little beeper which will tell you when the sequence is starting and when the CT machine's over because I ain't gonna be anywhere near here when this thing's going. I'm gonna be way over there. I'm gonna show you guys this thing working well without the x-ray tube going first. But first we have the Netflix button and we have the Disney button. So the Netflix button will do 45 x-rays for a full rotation of 360 degrees, eight degrees each rotation. And the Disney one will do 90 x-rays for four degrees each rotation for a full 360. So this one will give us better quality CT scan in the end, but it does take longer and the tube does get a lot hotter. So you need larger breaks in between, but the Netflix one is shorter and you need less breaks in between. So yeah, it's kind of just that simple. So let's run it. Imagine you're going into the doctor's to get a CT scan because of the unidentified object up your anus and he just comes out with a Roku remote and says, yep, time to start your CT scan. Okay, there we go. We have the initial starting sequence and that beeper tells you that the whole sequence is about to start. Boom, you hear the relays triggering down there. So we'll trigger all of that. And if you notice, the motor will turn just ever so slightly, which will be an eight degree rotation. Boom, just like that. And bada bing, bada boom, it is all ready. And then when the sequence is finished, you'll hear the beeper again. And that will just tell me, since I'll be aware of there, that the sequence is finished and yeah. Let's go ahead and show you guys the code for this real quick. And then we'll get into actually taking a CT scan. Okay, so here's the code for our CAT scanner. It's actually really simple. Um, don't destroy me in the comments too much because this is probably really bad. Uh, it's my first time coding pretty much anything, so. Uh, yeah, but you know it works, so good enough. I'm um, still so kind of just variable setup stuff. Um, kind of ignore that. Here's the code that really does all the work. Um, this section of code right here runs the Netflix button. This is the hex value for the Netflix button right here. So if the Netflix button runs, well, if it detects the Netflix button, then uh, it runs this sequence of code. Um, this just initially sets up the beeper to tell you the sequence is starting. Um, this is the actual main sequence that runs the x-ray tube and everything. Um, as you can see, it repeats 45 times for a full 360. Um, and then after that 45 times, um, it runs the beeper again. This part of the code is, is messed up somehow. I don't really know what, because um, the beeper doesn't last for a second. It uh, just continually holds on. I mean, still works for my purposes, but uh, yeah, it's messed up somewhere. And this is pretty much just the same thing, but this is for the Disney button, which does, you know, 90 cycles and uh, does the same thing. That is about it. So very simple code, and this is all we need to run our CAT scanner. Okay, you probably have some questions at this point. You're probably like, that looks nothing like a CT scan. And how come the object in this is rotated, but in a normal medical CT scan, the patient's not rotated at all? And I'll explain that. Because in a medical CT scan, the actual CT apparatus rotates around you. And now this is advantageous in a medical environment because you don't want to have to rotate the patient at a couple hundred RPMs. Because also in a medical CT, they make them spin very fast because they want to take the CT as fast as possible. Here, I don't really care if it takes 10 minutes because I, you know, it's not that big of a deal. But this is also very engineering intensive because you have to make sure everything's balanced. You need to supply power to this rotating ring. Um, it's just very engineering intensive. Okay, enough talking. Let's go ahead and take a CT scan. I'm going to CT scan is this lighter because in my previous x-ray videos, it came out really cool looking under the x-rays. About to go starter. One more thing, I did add a lead plate here just to help any radiation from striking our microcontroller because that could cause it to get all funky and mess up our scan. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and start the sequence and I'll be back. So the scan is done running and as you can see here, we got our raw data. It did only produce 40 images instead of 45. Um, that's probably due to some radiation striking the Arduino and jamming it up. But we do have our raw data, so now I'm gonna go ahead and use our batch function in Photoshop to grayscale all these and align them right so we can use them for our post-processing to make our actual CT scan. And here they are coming out of the Adobe batch function right now. And then I went ahead and combined all these together into a video type format to make these really cool visuals. Okay, so now that we got our raw data, it's time to actually reconstruct it into a CT scan. And for this, I'm using the filtered back projection technique. Um, there's different other techniques for reconstruction, but this is the most simple and least um, computer intensive. So yeah. 
And this website right here does a pretty good job at giving a simple explanation of how this all works. So here's a forward projection, and this is essentially what our x-ray tube already does for us. Um, so say we have an x-ray source here, we run it across here, right out of our normal projection, we're just gonna get three dots. Um, and then do it right here, we're only gonna get two dots out, and this kind of shows it. So a back projection is just the reverse of a forward projection. So we take this forward projection and we smear it back across the plane. As you can see, that's what they do right here, and this just produces three lines, which you know isn't very useful in and of itself. But we go ahead and do that all the way around this circle. You can see that we actually start to reconstruct our original image, and the more data we have, you know, the better quality this gets right here. Um, and then it's also called filtered because even if you have a lot of data points here, these spheres can kind of get fuzzy and blurry. So instead we apply a filter to the original raw data. Um, there's different filters, like right here gives an example, uh, a ramp filter. I'm not gonna get into detail about how all that works, um, but that kind of removes the fuzziness and makes our reconstruction better overall. So that's why earlier I kind of said that a CT scan is a three-dimensional x-ray because this essentially gives us a 3D map of density in an object. So these are called tomographic slices, right? So you do this filtered back projection on different slices of the data, and then this will give you what the slice of that object looks like. And then you also use the same technique to make 3D volume renders, um, so you can actually uh, you know, 3D model the object from the CT scanner and all the internals. So it's a really powerful technique um, and very simple actually. Down here gives some of the math about how all this works. I'm not going to get deep into this, but I'll also add some more links in the description if you uh, want to read up, you know, more about how all this works. So yeah, there you go. There's the basics of our filtered back projection. Okay, now here comes the fun part, and this is actually reconstructing our data. So normally you can do these reconstructions in a graphing software like MATLAB, um, but you have to be fairly good at coding for that, and uh, you know I'm not very familiar with MATLAB or anything. So instead, I'm using the cone beam back projection tool by Stanislav. Um, thank you to him a lot because this made this whole process a lot easier. And you see, it has this nice interface um, where you can change all the settings here without actually having to edit any code or anything. So yeah. Nice and easy, um, and I already loaded all the raw data into here because it has to be in a specific format and everything. But yeah, so it gives all these nice settings. So here's our lighter, and it's already been computed for the reconstruction. So we can change the slice offset. So this is looking layer through layer through the object. You can see down here it kind of maps that. And then we also change the angle at which we cut these slices. Um, and yeah, there you go. So you can see layer by layer, we get to the middle, you see some of the more dense internals and then it kind of fades away. So that's layer through layer looking through the lighter. And you can even see some of the liquid butane in there. You know, It's not very dense because you know it is butane, but you can see it, which is uh, really cool. So yeah, there is our CT scan of our lighter. And another really cool thing that you can do on here is he has a raycast volume, and this allows us to 3D model the lighter. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is awesome looking. Um, you can see the more dense internals, so you have the casing out here, and then looks like you have some more dense internals in there. Uh, you can see where the liquid butane layer is sitting at, um, and then you can see like some of the wires and stuff, and then you can see the piezoelectric system here to actually ignite the lighter. Um, yeah, that just looks incredible, um, and that is really cool that we, you know, 3D modeled our lighter and x-ray. And as you can see back here in our CT, it's not the clearest and best data. Um, we could obviously use the 90 um, cycle instead, which will give us much better data. You can see there's a lot of noise in here and stuff like that. Um, so eventually in the future, I will go ahead and do a 90 cycle one to get some better data out. And I'll probably uh, end up making the CT scanner and a nice housing and everything and uh, make it really high quality. But for now, this is a good proof of concept, and yeah, came out amazing. So that's going to be all the CAT scans we're taking for today, just the one. In the future, I'll probably post some shorts of different CAT scans I take, but at the time, it's just very time-intensive at the moment, so we're just doing the one for now. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. So, bye.